Act Two of The Winter's Tale by William Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Two, Scene One, Cecilia, a room in the palace. Enter Hermione, Mamilius, and ladies. Oh, take the boy to you. He so troubles me, this past enduring. Come, my gracious lord. Shall I be your playfellow? No, I'll none of you. Why, my sweet lord? You kiss me hard, and speak to me as if I were a baby still. To second lady. I love you better. And why so, my lord? Not for because your brows are blacker, yet black brows, they say, become some women best, so that there be not too much hair there, but in a semicircle or a half-moon made with a pen. Who taught you this? I learned it out of women's faces. Pray now, what colour are your eyebrows? Blue, my lord nay that's a mock i have seen a lady's nose that has been blue but not her eyebrows hark ye the queen your mother rounds a face we shall present our services to a fine new prince one of these days and then you'd wanton with us if we would have you <laughs> she is spread of late into a goodly bulk good time encounter her what wisdom stirs amongst you come sir now i am for you again pray you sit by us and tell us a tale merry or sad shall be <laughs> as merry as you will mm, a sad tale's best for winter i have one of sprites and goblins let's have that good sir come on sit down come on and do your best to fright me with your sprites you're powerful at it there was a man nay come sit down then on dwelt by a churchyard i will tell it softly yon cricket shall not hear it come on then and give it in mine ear enter leontes antigonus lords and guards was he met there his train camilla with him behind the tuft of pines i met them never saw i men scour so on their way i eyed them even to their ships how blessed am i in my just censure in my true opinion alack for lesser knowledge how accursed in being so blessed there may be in the cup a spider steeped and one may drink to part and yet partake no venom for his knowledge is not infected but if one present the abhorred ingredient to his eye make known how he hath drunk he cracks his gorge his side with violent hefts i have drunk and seen the spider camilla was his helper and this his pander there was a plot against my life my crown all's true that is mistrusted that false villain whom i employed was pre-employed by him he has discovered my design and i remain a pinch thing yea a very trick for them to play it well how can the postern so easily open by his great authority which often hath no less prevailed than so on your command i know it too well give me the boy i am glad you did not nurse him though he does bear some signs of me yet you have too much blood in him what is this sport but the boy hence he shall not come about her away with him and let her sport herself with that she's big with for tis polixenes has made thee swell thus exit mamilius with some of the guards but i'd say he had not and i'll be sworn you would believe my saying however you learned a nay word you my lords look on her mark her well be but about to say she is a goodly lady and the justice of your hearts will thereto add tis pity she's not honest honourable 
praise her but for this her without door form which on my faith deserves high speech and straight the shrug oh, the hum or oh, ha these petty brands that calumny doth use oh i am out that mercy does for calumny will sear virtue itself these shrugs these hums and haj when you have said she's goodly come between her you can say she's honest but be it known from him that has most cause to grieve it should be she's an adulteress oh, should a villain say so the most replenished villain in the world he were as much more villain you my lord do but mistake you have mistook my lady polixenes polyontes other oh, thing which i'll not call a creature of thy place lest barbarism making me the president should a like language use to all degrees and mannerly distinguishment leave out betwixt the prince and beggar i have said she's an adulteress i have said with whom more she's a traitor and camillo is a federary with her and one that knows what she should shame to know herself but with her most vile principle that she's a bedswerver even as bad as those that bulgars give bulgars titles i am privy to this their late escape no by my life privy to none of this how will this grieve you when you shall come to clearer knowledge that you thus have published me gentle my lord you scarce can write me throughly then to say you did mistake no if i mistake in those foundations which i build upon the centre is not big enough to bear a schoolboy top away with her to prison he who shall speak for her is a far-off guilty but that he speaks there's some ill planet reigns i must be patient till the heavens look with an aspect more favourable good my lords i am not prone to weeping as our sex commonly are the want of which vain dew perchance shall dry your pities but i have that honourable grief lodged here which burns worse than tears drown beseech you all my lords with thoughts so qualified as your charities shall best instruct you measure me and so the king's will be performed the aunties to the guard shall i be heard who is it that goes with me beseech your highness my women may be with me for you see my plight requires it do not weep good fools there is no cause when you shall know your mistress has deserved prison then abound in tears as i come out this action i now go on is for my better grace adieu my lord i never wish to see you sorry now i trust i shall my women come you have leave go do a bidding hence exeunt queen and ladies with guards beseech your highness call the queen again be certain what you do sir lest your justice prove violence in the which three great ones suffer yourself your queen your son for her my lord i dare my life lay down and will do it sir please you to accept it that the queen is spotless in the eyes of heaven and to you i mean in this would you accuse her if it prove she's otherwise i'll keep my stables where i lodge my wife i'll go in couples with her then when i feel and see her no further trust her for every inch of woman in the world ay every dram of woman's flesh is false if she be hold your pieces good my lord it is for you we speak not for ourselves you are abused and by some putter on that will be damned for it would i knew the villain i would land damn him be she on a flawed i have three daughters the eldest is eleven the second and the third nine and some five if this prove true they'll pay for it by mine honour i'll geld them all fourteen they shall not see to bring false generations they are co-heirs and i had rather glib myself than they should not produce fair issue cease no more you smell this business with a sense as cold as is a dead man's nose but i do see it and feel it as you feel doing thus 
and see with all the instruments that field if it be so we need no grave to bury honesty there's not a grain of it the face to sweeten of the whole dungy earth what lack i credit i had rather you did lack than i my lord upon this ground and more it would content me to have her honour true than your suspicion be blamed for it how you might why what need we commune with you of this but rather follow our forceful instigation our prerogative calls not your counsels but our natural goodness imparts this which if you or stupefied or seeming so in skill cannot or will not relish a truth like us inform yourselves we need no more of your advice the matter the loss the gain the ordering on it is all properly ours and i wish my liege you had only in your silent judgment tried it without more overture how could that be either thou art most ignorant by age or thou art born a fool camillo's flight added to their familiarity which was as gross as ever touched conjecture that lacked sight only not for approbation but only seeing all other circumstances made up to the deed to push on this proceeding yet for a greater confirmation for in an act of this importance to most piteous to be wild i have dispatched in post to sacred Delphus, to apollo's temple cleomenes and dion whom you know of stock sufficiency now from the oracle they will bring all whose spiritual counsel had shall stop or spare me have i done well well done my lord though i am satisfied and need no more than what i know yet shall the oracle give rest to the minds of others such as he whose ignorant credulity will not come up to the truth so have we thought it good from our free person she should be confined lest that the treachery of the two fled hence be left her to perform come follow us we are to speak in public for this business will raise us all antigonus aside hmm, to laughter as i take it if the good truth were known exeunt scene two the same the outer room of a prison enter paulina and attendants the keeper of the prison call to him let him have knowledge who i am exit an attendant good lady no court in europe is too good for thee what dost thou then in prison re-enter attendant with the keeper now good sir you know me do you not for a worthy lady and one who much i honour pray you then conduct me to the queen i may not madam to the contrary i have expressed commandment here's a do to lock up honesty and honour from the access of gentle visitors is it lawful pray you to see her women any of them amelia so please you madam to put apart these your attendants i shall bring amelia forth i pray now call her withdraw yourselves exeunt attendants and madam i must be present at your conference well be it so prithee exit keeper he is such a do to make no stain a stain as passes colouring re-enter keeper with amelia dear gentlewoman how fares our gracious lady as well as one so great and so forlorn may hold together on her frights and griefs which never tender lady hath borne greater she is something before her time delivered a boy a daughter and a goodly babe lusty and like to live the queen receives much comfort in t says my poor prisoner i am as innocent as you i dare be sworn these dangerous unsafe loons in the king beshrew them he must be told on it and he shall the office becomes a woman best i'll take it upon me if i prove honey-mouthed let my tongue blister and never to my red-looked anger be the trumpet any more pray you amelia commend my best obedience to the queen if she dares trust me with her little babe 
i'll show it the king and undertake to be her advocate to the loudest we do not know how he may soften at the sight of the child the silence often of pure innocence persuades when speaking fails most worthy madam your honour and your goodness is so evident that your free undertaking cannot miss a thriving issue there is no lady living so meet for this great errand please your ladyship to visit the next room i'll presently acquaint the queen of your most noble offer who but to-day hammered of this design but durst not tempt the minister of honour lest she should be denied tell her amelia i'll use that tongue i have if wit flow from it as boldness from my bosom let it not be doubted i shall do good now be you blessed for it i'll to the queen please you come something nearer madam if it please the queen to send the babe i know not what i shall incur to pass it having no warrant you need not fear it sir this child was prisoner to the womb and is by law and process of great nature thence freed and enfranchised not a party to the anger of the king nor guilty of if any be the trespass of the queen i do believe it do not you fear upon mine honour i will stand betwixt you and danger exeunt scene three the same a room in the palace enter leontes antignus lords and other attendants no night no day no rest it is but weakness to bear the matter thus mere weakness if the cause were not in being part of the cause she the adulteress for the harlot king is quite beyond mine arm out of the blank and level of my brain plot proof but she i can hook to me say that she were gone given to the fire a moiety of my rest might come to me again who's there my lord how does the boy he took good rest to-night tis hoped his sickness is discharged to see his nobleness conceiving the dishonour of his mother he straight declined drooped took it deeply fastened and fixed the shame on it in himself threw off his spirit his appetite his sleep and downright languish leave me solely go see how he fares exit first attendant fie fie no thought of him the very thought of my revenge is that way recoil upon me in himself too mighty and in his parties his alliance oh let him be until a time may serve for present vengeance take it on her camillo and polixenes laugh at me make their pastime at my sorrow they should not laugh if i could reach them nor shall she within my power enter paulina with a child you must not enter nay rather good my lords be second to me fear you his tyrannous passion more alas than the queen's life her gracious innocent soul more free than he is jealous that's enough madam he hath not slept to-night commanded none should come at him not so hot good sir i come to bring him sleep tis such as you that creep like shadows by him and to sigh at each his needless heavings such as you nourish the cause of his awaking i do come with words as medicinal as true honest as either to purge him of that humour that presses him from sleep what now is that oh no noise my lord but needful conference about some gossips for your highness oh <laughs> i would that audacious lady antigonus i charge thee that she should not come about me i knew she would i told her so my lord on your displeasure's peril and on mine she should not visit you what canst not row her from all dishonesty he can in this unless he take the course that you have done commit me for committing honour trust it he shall not rule me la you now you hear when she will take the rein i let her run but she'll not stumble good liege i come and i beseech you hear me who professes myself your loyal servant your physician your most obedient counsellor yet that there's less appear so in comforting your evils than such as most seem yours i say i come from your good queen 
good queen good queen my lord good queen i say good queen and would by combat make her good so were i a man the worst about you fast hand let him that makes but trifles of his eyes first hand me on mine own accord i'll off but first i'll do my errand the good queen for she is good hath brought you forth a daughter here it is commends it to your blessing laying down the child out a mankind witch thanks with her out a door a most intelligencing bond not so i am as ignorant in that as you in so entitling me and no less honest than you are mad which is enough i'll warrant as this world goes to pass for honest traitors why do not push her out give her the bastard thou dotard to antigonus thou art woman tired unroosted by thy dame partlet here take up the bastard take it up i say give it to the crown forever unvenerable be thy hands if thou takest up the princess by that forced baseness which he has put upon it he dreads his wife so i would you did then twere past all doubt you'd call your children yours unless the traitors i am none by this good light nor i nor any but one that's here and that's himself for he the sacred honour of himself his queens his hopeful sons his babes betrays to slander whose sting is sharper than the swords and will not for as the case now stands it is a curse he cannot be compelled to it once remove the root of his opinion which is rotten as ever oak or stone was sound a callous a boundless tongue who late hath beat her husband and now baits me oh this brat is none of mine it is the issue of polixenes and with it and together with the damned commit them to the fire it is yours and might we lay the old proverb to your charge so like you tis the worse behold my lords although the print be little the whole matter and copy of the father eye nose lip the trick of his frown his forehead nay the valley the pretty dimples of his chin and cheek his smiles the very mould and frame of hand nail finger and thou good goddess nature which hast made it so like to him that got it if thou hast the ordering of the mind too mongst all colours no yellow in it lest she suspect as he does her children not her husband's a grouse hag and blows all thou art worthy to be hanged that wilt not stay her tongue ha huh, hang all the husbands that cannot do that feat and you'll leave yourself hardly one subject one more take her hands a most unworthy and unnatural lord can do no more i'll have the ban i care not it is an heretic that makes the fire not she which burns in it i'll not call you tyrant but this most cruel usage of your queen not able to produce more accusation than your own weak hinged fancy something savours of tyranny and will ignoble make you yea scandalous to the world on your allegiance out of the chamber with her were i a tyrant where were her life she does not call me so if she did know me one away with her i pray you do not push me i'll be gone look to your babe my lord tis yours jove sent her a better guiding spirit what needs these hands you that are thus so tender over his follies will never do him good not one of you so so farewell we are gone exit thou traitor hast set on thy wife to this my child away with it even thou that hast a heart so tender or it take it hence and see it instantly consumed with fire even thou and none but thou take it up straight within this hour bring me what is done and by good testimony or i'll seize thy life with that thou else callst thine 
if thou refuse and wilt encounter with my wrath say so the bastard brains with these my proper hands shall i dash out go take it to the fire for thou setst on thy wife i did not sir these lords my noble fellows if they please can clear me and we can my royal liege he is not guilty of her coming hither you liars all beseech your highness give us better credit we have always truly served you and beseech so to esteem of us and on our knees we beg as recompense of our dear services past and to come that you do change this purpose which being so horrible so bloody must lead on to some foul issue we all kneel i am a feather for each wind that blows shall i live on to see this bastard kneel and call me father better burn it now than curse it then but be it let it live it shall not die though to antigonus you sir come you hither you that have been so tenderly officious with lady marjorie your midwife that to save this bastard's life which is a bastard so sure as this beard's grey what will you adventure to save this brat's life anything my lord that my ability may undergo a nobleness impose at least thus much i'll pawn the little blood which i have left to save the innocent anything possible it shall be possible swear by this sword thou wilt perform my bidding i will my lord mark and perform it seest thou for the fail of any point in it shall not only be death to thyself but to thy lute-tongued wife whom for this time we pardon we enjoin thee as thou art liegeman to us that thou carry this female bastard hence and that thou bear it to some remote and desert place quite out of our dominions and that there thou leave it without more mercy to its own protection and favour of the climate as by strange fortune it came to us i do in justice charge thee on thy soul's peril and thy body's torture that thou commend it strangely to some place where chance may nurse or end it take it up i swear to do this though a present death had been more merciful come on poor babe some powerful spirit instructs the kites and ravens to be thy nurses wolves and bears they say casting their savageness aside have done like offices of pity sir be prosperous in more than this deed does require and blessing against this cruelty fight on thy side poor thing condemned to loss exit with the child no i'll not rear another's issue please your highness posts from those you sent to the oracle are come an hour since cleomenes and dion being well arrived from delphos are both landed hasting to the court so please you sir their speed hath been beyond account twenty-three days they have been absent tis good speed for tells the great apollo suddenly will have the truth of this appear prepare you lords summon a session that we may arraign our most disloyal lady for as she hath been publicly accused so shall she have a just and open trial while she lives my heart will be a burden to me leave me and think upon my bidding exeunt end of act two